Hello, my fellow T-Birders. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is, uh, since I've been having some inquiries about the vacuum systems on these 61 to 66 Thunderbirds with air conditioning, they're basically the same. The plenums are basically the same. There are some subtle differences, but they're 90% the same. The vacuum systems work the same. Now, these are with air cars only. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to show you the layout. I'm going to show you how everything is routed, where it's supposed to be, etc. So you can see what you're in for if you ever have to change one of these or repair one. And also, uh, the vacuum systems, the vacuum hoses can be changed with the dash in the car, but you have to pull the heater box, which is over there on the right. I'll give you a close-up of that. Here's the heater box, and that's um, that's this thing. The heater core is right in here. Here's the right vent boot right here, which connects to the cowl. Here's the recirculating air door vacuum motor. This is the wiring for the dash loom that goes behind the dash into the gauges. Here's your vent. And then there's the uh, main air conditioning vent right here. Wiring back to the tail lights, tail light loom all the way back to the convertible. Now, in order to get the heater box out, you have to uh, remove this plate. Now remember that these are machine screws. They're fine threaded machine screws, these three only. But the rest of them are sheet metal screws. So not, not only don't mix them up, but these, but put them back in the right place, which is never the case. <laughs> anyway, this comes off. And then once that comes off, you gotta go in here and you gotta undo those four nuts. There's three. There's the third one, and the fourth one is up in this corner, and you can't see it because it's too dark. So there's four nuts holding the heater box to the fan compartment. And then, you know, disconnect the vent cable, disconnect your hose here. You have to remove this, this is in the way. And then when you pull this out, after you disconnect it from the firewall, which I'll show you, this comes out and down, kind of at a, maybe at a 45, you'll, you'll see, but you gotta pull this off the studs and then it comes down and out. Then on the inside, to get the heater box out, you take the heater hoses off, obviously. And I would blow it out before you take it out. You know, put an air hose in here and blow it out so that when you pull it out from the inside, you don't spill coolant all over your carpeting. And then there's this nut here, and there's another one underneath, see it? It's those two, and that's it. Then that heater box comes down and out. So let's start from where the vacuum system originates. And uh, this is a 1966 Thunderbird convertible, 428, but it's an FE engine family. They're the same, 390, 428. And they're gonna, all the connections and accessories are gonna be the same. The engine size doesn't determine that. So your vacuum system is gonna originate from here. And it's gonna, the, the main, vacuum hose is going to go here all the way into the vacuum canister. This goes through the fender well and there's a vacuum canister. Now on 64s and 65 the vacuum canister is going to be bolted to here and it's going to sit right here and these hoses will connect to that. Then the vacuum system 
Now this is a, I'm sorry, this hose is a 27043. That's the part number for a 50 foot roll of this size of vacuum hose. And this is a 27041, all gates. And this is the source hose that goes into the firewall. Right here, goes into the firewall here. And this is your, this is also 27041, goes to the heater valve. And if you had vacuum door locks, you'd have, a th you'd have another hose that goes to that canister, which sits here. And another hose would go to that. A larger uh, 27043 hose would go to that and inside the car. But this car doesn't have that option. So the, on this car, without the vacuum door locks, you only have the two hoses coming through the firewall. And this is the brown colored, color-coded brown. This one, the source hose is color-coded black. Now, I bypassed the thermostatic control switch inside. It's still there, but I bypassed it. So this hose, which comes from directly from here, goes directly to the control on the dash. The black color-coded, this is the brown color-coded hose. And this one also goes directly to the control on the dash. Now, those hoses come in from the firewall and here they are here. It's these two hoses here, right here. And you can see this gold thing, that's the thermostatic control switch. I have these two holes just going straight through the firewall and I bypass this completely. And the reason why is because they're not available. Uh, they're what, 50 plus years old. And so those come into this bundle and they come around and they come right here to the control. Now this is the black hose, the source hose. And I have it temporarily hooked up like this just for testing purposes. And this, this source hose supplies two things on the control unit. First, it goes to black here. It goes to black. And then it goes to the temperature switch, which is this switch. Now this is upside down, but it goes right to the temperature switch. So when you do your temperature minimum maximum, this supplies it with vacuum, and then it comes out of the switch and goes to silver. See? Yeah. And then from there you have your pizza, your colored pie pizza discs or whatever you want to call them. And they all service the vacuum canisters. This is your defroster, red. This is your air conditioning, main air conditioning valve, blue. This is your recirculating air door. And I have that marked white. And I, you can see that I use tie wraps. I use color coded tie wraps because they don't come off. Now you see a green one here. The green one goes to the heater door on both sides, but it's not green on the control. It's tan on the control. And I don't know why they do that, but that green, you see where I have it. And it's in the car that way. If you, if you, when you take out your old hoses, you'll notice that it comes off tan and then splits into green and goes to the two heater ducts. And then you have yellow. That's the air conditioning compressor vacuum valve, on-off vacuum valve. So here, let me unplug this from this 
So when you when vacuum is applied to yellow, it turns the valve on. It sends power to the compressor, turns the switch on, sorry. And that's what sends power to the compressor, to the clutch. There's your expansion valve. There's the uh, sensing tube, which I have tie wrapped to the low pressure hose. So anyway, let's go look at that again. You can see how I have the hoses all bundled up under here. These are factory. This is where this, the clamp should be. They're all bundled up under the dash on top of the plenum, just like that. And they come down and they bundle up there and they go off to their prospective places. So the hoses from there, from that bundle, they come down and they go right to the control unit. It's a pretty simple system. It really is. It's just a lot of work changing all those hoses, you know. But with the dash out, you can certainly see clearly how these things are laid out. It's not difficult. Pretty simple.